Hey guys, wanted to go ahead and go over a tutorial here to help out anybody who's looking to improve their acoustics. I'm gonna go ahead and type in acoustic foam here. Uh, I'm not really at Washington DC, but you know, let's just go and type this in here. And the point I'm trying to say is when you go on Amazon and you type in acoustic foam, all this stuff here is absolute garbage. None of this stuff works. However, when you try to buy the expensive stuff, like Oralex, they give you so little and it costs you $400. But this stuff works, but they don't give you enough. So what do people usually say? People usually say, build acoustic panels or buy acoustic panels. I think this is actually the worst advice it gives to someone who's new, even though it's the correct advice, because they're not going to build it. They're not going to They're not going to do it, right? So why are you telling someone they're not going to do it? But they're not going to buy it either because they look at, oh, 44 bucks a panel. I don't want to buy that, right? So it's only like later on, um, you know, when they realize, no, it's worth it. You know, either they will go out and they're like, no, it's worth making it or it's worth buying it, like, and they'll do it. And yeah, you're going to get great sound out of acoustic panels. These are far better than this crap right here. But what I want to do is to go over things that you actually have in the house. You all have pillows. You guys all have blankets. You guys all have clothes. And these, believe it or not, this right here, this stack of clothing right here is better than this right here. You know, this stack of pillow, your, your blankets right here are better than this stuff. Why? Because it's all about mass, thickness and softness and mass. This stuff doesn't do crap. This is the biggest scam in voiceover. So yeah, let's start. Let's go. Let's get to it. All right. So let's start from the beginning. What I usually say is, do you have a closet? Yes or no? So most people, they got, they got a closet. Is it a walk-in closet or a non-walk-in closet? In other words, and here's the difference. So with a walk-in closet, you've got a lot of space. Basically, your microphone has space to breathe and there's a lot of thick and dense, especially when you stack your clothing. It's your audio is going to sound really, really good in a walk-in closet. Plus there are no hard walls right next to the microphone. That's key. A reaching closet, by comparison, you have nowhere to go. You put your microphone right here. Where, where is your microphone? It's right next to the wall. And if you put it right here, right next to clothing, it sounds muffled. And if you try to put it away from the wall, it sounds reverby. So basically, so let's say they, you know, they go, it's a walk-in closet. Dude, it's easy. All you got to do is just stack it up with clothes, comforters, pillows, add decorative pillows. Um, go, you're, you're set to go. And it's easy mode. The only way you can mess up a walk-in closet, and I've seen it quite a few times, and I, I'm guilty of this myself, you take out your clothing, you take out all your blankets, you take everything out and you put in acoustic foam. That's, this is trash. Believe it or not, your blankets are better than acoustic foam. Your clothing is better than acoustic foam. I think the biggest scam in voiceover is acoustic foam. We have been conditioned by YouTube to thinking that cheap acoustic foam is good. You do not want to use this. Use what you've got. Use your thick pillows. Use your blankets. Use your clothing. Have the clothing stacked, not tiny little bits of clothing stacked. Okay. If you do that, you're going to get great sound. Okay. So let's say the answer is, okay, I've got a reaching closet. All right. So if you got a reaching closet, you got to, the answer is you make do, you try to make it work, but let me make something clear. The problem with reaching closets is that, and this is actually, this video is done by boot junkie where he was trying to he made this video for everyone who's new to voice acting saying, hey, just use your closet. But he doesn't record here. He never would record here. He knows it. Because at the end of the day, this is a triple threat. Your microphone's right next to a wall. It's going to sound boxy. Hey, guys, I'm just going to stop the video right here just for a second here because I want to explain the word boxy. Hi there. wanted to go ahead and do a quick demonstration of what I mean by boxy and to go from there. So what I'm going to do is move this microphone and create a simulated boxy environment. So give me one second here. All right, so now it's starting to sound more boxy. And when something is boxy, it's because it's literally your microphone is often your very hard surfaces. And this adds to a boxy effect. And putting acoustic foam in a, in a walking, I mean, in a reaching closet doesn't help either. That sounds like crap. And if you put your microphone right next to clothing, it sounds muffled. So you try to make do. And basically, the long story short is you try to make do. If it doesn't work, you're going to just have to make a PVC booth. And this is going to give you great sound. Now, I'm not going to put the, all the tutorials on there. This video would take too long. I'm just going to just say, go, P, go the PVC booth route. Okay, so let's say they say, no, I don't have a closet. Okay, then I usually ask them, do you require a standing microphone? Like, do you need to be standing or are you okay sitting down? Now, if, it's, if they're standing, it's a lot harder because this treatment has to go all the way up to where they are. But if they're okay with sitting down, then it's easy because the treatment can start from the desk up. But if they, but let's say they go, no, I need to be standing. And I get it. Voice actors are all about making sure that they're standing when they're doing the voice acting. Well, then you've got two options. You can either make acoustic panels or buy acoustic panels or go for a PVC booth. And in general, most people go the PVC booth route. Okay. So let's say their answer is, sorry, I can't. 
I can't afford a PVC booth. I don't have enough space. I don't have any closets. I'm not going to make acoustic panels. I'm not going to buy acoustic panels. No problem. Then there's a last resort. This is more of a last resort. Um, it's not the best sound, but it's pretty dang good. What this is actually what I use when I travel. It's my travel setup. Use a luggage rack, or in this case, use a Amazon Basics folding rack. And so what you do is you stack it up with pillows on top, put blankets over. So basically here, you, you put a pillow here, pillow here, pillow here, microphone here, blanket, 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 blanket. And that's going to give you a pretty good sound. That's going to sound a lot better than acoustic foam in a freaking uh, reaching closet. It's it, Believe it or not, because there's no hard walls right next to the microphone. So it's going to be something like this. Now, this is different from those cheapy acoustic like uh, foam boxes you get from Amazon because those boxes are this tiny and they give you thin stuff. This is thick you know, thick pillows. And, you know, if you're going to do anything loud, then you flap the blanket over your head. But this is basically a, a pillow fort, but it's going to give you a really great sound. So, yeah, this is really brief. I'm going to go ahead and give you the actual tutorials for each of these and how to make each of these. You guys have a great one. Okay, bye.